year 12. A bit of a two week gap. Nice to see you all again. Still not sure who Lime Green Lab is. We'll work on that. The bit that was missing from the intermolecular bonding was hydrogen bonding because we ran out of time before the, the holiday. So hydrogen bonding, very special thing in terms of what it achieves. It is just a particular, well, a particularly strong type of dipole dipole attraction. And those are permanent dipoles. But they have some very specific parameters that allow you to know that there's a hydrogen bond rather than just a straightforward simple dipole dipole attraction like before. It explains a number of phenomena, I think is the uh, language word for these things, where you have unexpectedly high melting points and boiling points for quite small molecules, which would lead you to have a low value, because if it were just based purely on instantaneous dipole, inst oh God, ID, ID, you know what I mean. If it were based purely on this instantaneous and induced, the, the induced dipole thing, they would have a really low value, but they have an unexpectedly high value. Hydrogen bonding is usually the, the reason behind that. It also explains everything but the primary structure of proteins for the bio, biology people here, because it inv involves in the, the shaping of a protein where it wraps around on itself and makes a three-dimensional shape. It involved, it's involved in the mixing of liquids. It does affect the boiling points, but that's no longer part of A-level courses. And it also explains one of the things that uh, we kind of take for granted, which is how unusual water is. And it explains possibly why water is such a key thing on the planet, because of all the things it can do chemically that allow it to do all the things it does in the environment in many other guises. So hydrogen bonding, caused by two things. You've got to have a polarised hydrogen. So if you take a molecule of HF, for instance, that is very, very much the electronegative king, or queen, other genders are available. Very much a fixed permanent feature of that molecule is that permanent dipole. That is a strong enough dipole to allow hydrogen bonding. See, hydrogen bonding is triggered by a strong enough dipole. Now, there's a kind of rule of thumb about that that allows you to know this molecule is going to hydrogen bond, other ones won't. So, if you take that, that's one of the things. The other thing you need. And we're going to do this just with HF, horrific stuff that HF is, is that you need an electronegative atom, and electronegative atoms will have the lone pairs, because that's the very nature of electronegative atoms, is it will have, and of course they're also on this one, it has the lone pair on the electronegative atom that allows you, and the standard way to represent a hydrogen bond that you see is like that and then that goes on to the next H. And of course these are polarised as well. And so it goes on, it's got a big chain of these HF molecules. So hydrogen fluoride would have a high boiling point than its size would let you believe. So that is the standard representation of a hydrogen bonding. Now in there, that drawing shows the two things that you need. Number bullet point, oh, I should have done a one, shouldn't I? Hang on. Number one. But that's not enough. It's got to be polarised by NOF. 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 Nitrogen. Oxygen. You got it. Fluorine. So, NOF is the key. You do any, 
you, you, you put any other atom in, not electronegative enough to trigger hydrogen bonding. That's the rule of thumb for this, is that it's not. The second thing is you've got the polarised hydrogen. And it's going to be NOF with a lone pair. So therefore, those are the two criteria. Now there were two classic A-level errors to be made. Okay. So the classic is you go there's a hydrogen, I'll do a hydrogen bond. No, there's no NOF in there. It was this that I couldn't find because I wanted to rub it out. That was that look. So classic mistake number one, pick the wrong hydrogen. Obviously you need to pick the right hydrogen. The other one is in there. It is this is a straight line, it's 180 degrees. So a hydrogen bond has to be 180 degrees. Now the classic thing that people do is they just bodge it together a drawing and the hydrogen bond ends up with something like and they go, oh, it needs to go down to my other molecule down here. The mark has gone. Bye bye to the mark. Because you've got a not 180 degrees. So the only way to get the only way to get the drawing mark right is if you're going to do that, and this is kind of the way that I think you should think about drawing a hydrogen bond. Is you draw the polarised hydrogen, because that's the polarised hydrogen, because NOF. You just get the bond and you just carry on with the hydrogen bond. And don't draw the other molecule until you've drawn the hydrogen bond straight on. So whatever di direction that's going, if it's going down there, just carry straight on. And then put the other atom all in a straight line and then do whatever the rest of the molecule is. That way you won't fall foul of the 180 degree error that you see people make. Now, I asked you to download a sheet. We had a little gravity based incident involving, um, we're back, I wiped the board. I just want to draw one little thing. Water, often I've asked for in um, A-level, draw a hydrogen bond type questions. So water, water has got two lone pairs and two hydrogens. That means it does two hydrogen bonds per molecule. If someone's only got one lone pair, it's only going to do one hydrogen bond per molecule. So hydrogen, really good. It's kind of like maxing out on the hydrogen bonds. Because HF doesn't do three, because it's only got one hydrogen. So hydrogen, hydrogens are not on the oxygen there. So you're going to do the hydrogen bond. Like I said, straight on, and then do the other molecule. And there'll be some lone pairs on there. You want? Yeah, yeah. Now water's quite special. We'll come back to why water is special after you've had a go at question one. So I'm going to ask you to stop the video, and we're going to get you to answer question one. See you shortly. Here's the answers. Wasn't enough. 180 degrees, because that's that critical thing. And hydrogen bond between two ammonia molecules come out of the hydrogen straight onto the lone pair on the other nitrogen. And you get it, obviously, onto other molecules. And there we go. I now need to get the board ready for the second part of this, so we're just going to take a little gap. I'm back. So, you've dealt with question one. Fairly straightforward questions. Now I'm going to do some explanations to do with hydrogen bonding. Three classic things up there. Boiling and melting points. Quite a common question. Explain why melting point is high compared to what it should be. Melting point, boiling point, same explanation. So when you look at these two molecules, they are isomers of each other. They've both got six hydrogens, two carbons and an oxygen. However, 
the boiling point of this, 78 degrees Celsius, a bit less than the boiling point of water. I've only got one polarised hydrogen, does less hydrogen bonding. This, which is called methoxymethane, don't need to know much about it, but you do need to know it is a bent molecule, same reason as water is bent to lone pairs, and that means it does have a dipole on the entire molecule because the positives are off centre and the negative is off centre. But this has a boiling point of minus 25, so therefore it's a gas at room temperature. Now, in terms of the IDID, instantaneous induced, they should be the same because they've got the same molecular mass and the same number of electrons. So clearly there's a bonding between the molecules explanation for the melting and boiling points. Ethanol, NOF, polarised, hydrogen bond straight on. Here, these three hydrogens are not polarised, no hydrogen bond, massive difference between the two. Explanation number one. Water is special. Water is special, I hinted at that already. Two hydrogen bonds per molecule causes water to do a number of quite fantastic things. Uh, if we were in a lab, I would get you to put a needle resting on the surface of the water. So water can hold up a needle. It's all down to hydrogen bonding. It's the thing we call surface tension. Surface tension is a restriction of hydrogen bonding direction. Normally hydrogen bonding can go in any of the three dimensions. Once you get to the surface of water, the hydrogen bonds have to fit within the body of the liquid, so they fold over. It gives you a stronger surface, and you can do things with that surface. It causes raindrops to be round. It causes you to be able to put a needle, and you'll see it if you do it. If you look at a picture of it on the internet, it will dip down where the surface is dragged down by the weight of the needle. It's a fantastic thing. One drop of detergent, fail, because detergent works by breaking hydrogen bonds in water. So, that's not, that's not the only thing detergents do, but it's one of the things they do. So water is special. Surface tension. The other thing is it's quite a unique liquid. Almost all liquids, their solid of the same substance sinks in the liquid. But you know, courtesy of the Titanic, and other things to do with icebergs, the ice floats on water. That's all to do with hydrogen bonding. Hydrogen bonding causes, when it forms the water going solid, it forms cages or tunnels, in fact, in the structure of the ice. You have to look at a picture of that because it's beyond me to draw. When you look at it, you can see all the water molecules lined up in a hexagon of three water molecules going in a tunnel. So it opens out the structure which means that when water is a liquid, the molecules of the water are closer together than when they're in the solid. So therefore, the solid has less atoms per volume, which means it's less dense, so it floats on it. Very rare thing that I actually know of no other liquids. I'm sure there are, but I just don't know the names of them. Probably to do with hydrogen bonding in any other substance that would do it. So you get water doing two special things solid floating in its liquid and the surface tension effect. You see much less surface tension effects in other liquids. The other thing is bucking the trend. Now I, hint, I meant, mentioned this before. When you look at a group in a periodic table and the properties of something that where one of them can do hydrogen bonding, which means it has to be the group headed by nitrogen, headed by oxygen, headed by fluorine. If you were to look at either of those, Look at the boiling point, put the formula mass along the bottom there, they all do that. Where the first one is higher than it should be. And that's where question two comes in. Because if you look at question two, there was a graph to plot. And I would like you to do question two. There's a couple of answers on the page that follows related to question two. And I'll see you after you've uh, stopped the video, answered the questions, and I'll go through what you should have said. See you in a moment. Didn't draw the graph. Graph is a classic tick thing that we had last time where the, the small one 
NH3 in the case of this data pops up higher than it should be. It's the one that I sketched on the board. But the other two parts of the question, B and C, only ammonia does hydrogen bonds, therefore you get the flick up for ammonia. The rest of them rise up because increasing formula mass, increasing number of electrons, increasing instantaneous dipole induced dipole for the remaining hydrides in group 5. You get the same thing in group 6 and the same thing in group 7 as well. And that's that. Now we're just going to get the board ready for the final bit. See you in a minute. So, last little bit, very little left to do. Drawing the hydrogen bond between two not the same molecules. Now, one of the things that people do is they draw the first molecule. Now this one hasn't got any polarised hydrogens. Ah, because these hydrogens are not the hydrogen bonding component. This is propanone. Here, the oxygen with the lone pairs fits the NOF criteria. I'm going to do the drawing in the opposite way to what I've done before. So what you have to do is you have to go, oh, there's the hydrogen bond. I'm going to carry on the hydrogen bond. This is another one of those opportunities to do a kinked hydrogen bond. That looks a shoddy looking age, but anyway. Now I want to put that with water there, straight on. It's all got to go straight on, so the OHO is in a straight line. There's the 180 around there. Then, don't matter what you do with the other hydrogen. So this hydrogen bonding situation explains why that propanone and water will mix together. So some molecules, the water has hydrogen bonding and something else has not the ability to do hydrogen bonding, something like hexane. Hexane won't let water in. The hydrogen bonds will hold the water together, the hexane will do ID, ID, and the two things won't mix. If you can get an interaction between them, in this case a hydrogen bond, you will get mixing. You've never had a question like that before. And now you've just got question three to do. I'm going to get you to pause, and then we'll come back with the answers to question three, and then we're done for the day. Uh, See you shortly. Oh, you've done it. So I took the opportunity to have a cup of tea whilst you were answering the question. Circling the hydrogen on four of those. Those are the four that you've got there. Methanol's the top one up there. Those ones, not polarised. It's only that one that can do hydrogen bonding. This here, which is a representation of a substance called phenol. All of these hydrogens, not polarised, only the one attached to the oxygen. I think they're getting the plan. It doesn't have to be oxygen, but this one is. This is a thing called polyvinyl alcohol, sorry, not called polyvinyl alcohol, vinyl alcohol in old, in old language. It's what PVA glue is made of. There's the hydrogen bonding hydrogen. Here, Different substance, it's uh, a thing called a diamine, uh, not diamine, sorry, uh, and, and, uh, it's just an amine of some kind, secondary amine, there we go. These ones, no, it's only that one there. Now I need to wipe the board in order to do the final little bit because there wasn't quite enough space, so we're going to take a little tiny pause. Oh. Right, ethanol, hydrogen bonded to HF. Now, I've done it twice, because there are two ways you could have done the drawing. Both of them are just as correct as each other. So you could go, there's the O, there's the polarised hydrogen, straight line on, it's going to have to be the F, and then the H in some form or another. It doesn't have to all go in a straight line, the hydrogen could be at a different angle. So that's one way. The other way is for the hydrogen bond to have come off from the lone pair on the oxygen, which means it will hit the hydrogen, but this one does have to go, because there's the 180 on both of the molecules. So therefore the fluorine position is fixed this time. Either of them are correct, providing you do that, don't get it out of 180 degrees thing. And that is the end of question three, and that is the end of today's lesson. It's also the end of the content before 
all the stuff that I'm going to put in the exam. I've sent an, uh, a show my homework thing about that. I will look forward to your replies. And, uh, well, that's it. We are done. I will see you shortly for whatever's next in Adventures in Chemistry, as I decided to call it. Bye.